Governor Walker gave his budget speech last week, and one of the items in his proposal included the I-94 East-West project to expand the area behind me between 70th and 16th Street by one lane. However, he decided to redirect those funds for that project to the I-94 North-South Corridor project in Racine and Kenosha counties. In Milwaukee, in the midst of a major decline in teen pregnancy, Carol Meekins is in the newsroom with a story new on Live at Five. It's become a common problem for many who drive Honda cars. Warning lights that come on when there's no problem. Next, find out what Honda plans to do for owners so you don't waste your money. The Milwaukee Brewers kick off spring training on Tuesday where pitchers and catchers report for the team. We're outside Miller Park where the parking lots will be filled with fans on April 3rd for opening day against Colorado. Thanks for joining us at 6. The Mike McCarthy Show is next. Good night. Just in time for Halloween, owners of a popular car are reporting phantom warning messages. The messages alerts the driver that the car has a problem when it really does not. Consumer reporter John Maturis investigates so you don't waste your money. We love high-tech cars. With those, I'm John Maturis. Today's TMJ4. Storm team now, a big weekend coming up for all the little ghouls and goblins. Let's see what the weekend weather looks like. Meteorologist Jesse Ritka has got all the details for us. The young player the Packers may have to depend on in Dallas come Sunday later in sports. It's not your typical February where it's this sunny and warm outside. According to my weather app, it's 66 degrees here in Milwaukee. We're here in Bradford Beach and as you can see behind me, some people are already taking advantage of the nice weather. But it all comes to an end tomorrow when the high is going to be 43 degrees. And now's a good time to download the Storm Shield app if you haven't already. Track storms on the live radar and get weather alerts based on your exact location. The Storm Shield app is available for Apple and Android devices. More local news now. Milwaukee teens aren't having babies as often as they were 10 years ago or even last year. The local teen birth rate having dropped to a historic low. Yeah. Hi, I'm here for office hours. Now. It's just after 2.30 on a Thursday, and UWM junior Brittany Mitchell is just checking in for her office hours as a peer mentor coach at the Student Success Center, the campus home of the peer mentors. It's a job of the peer mentors to help connect first-year students with resources on campus, but that's just a small piece of what they do. I like to look at us as the cool aunts and uncles of the students here at Milwaukee. Um, they can come to us with any problems that they're facing, any questions they have, or even if they've just had a tough day and need to vent session about one of their professors or something like that. Mitchell's role as a peer mentor coach is a little bit different than the peer mentors. As a coach, she's in charge of a team of peer mentors. Mitchell says a typical day for a peer mentor during office hours includes catching up on emails and student interactions, answering student questions, and reaching out to students. After her office hours are over, Mitchell works on some homework before the office closes. Her major is in the American Sign Language Interpreters Training Program. Her decision to enter the program stems from someone she met in high school during her senior year. I met a girl named Sherry who um, is actually deaf herself. So I learned a lot from her and her interpreters as well and just fell in love with gesturing and the language and the culture and decided to take a leap and come here for that major instead. Hey, have fun. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> After 5 p.m. she heads home for more homework before she has to return back to campus for practice. For the Panther dance team, that is. Mitchell says that the practices for the Panther dance team vary each day of the week. They usually start with a team meeting led by their coach, where they go over items like where the team is now, events, appearances, and performances. Performances is key because the team has the national competition coming up in January in Orlando. Then they usually do a team run followed by a team stretch. Then they begin their practice. The 16-member team also performs at UWM sporting events, such as basketball games, select soccer games, and one volleyball game. The team also practices three times a week. With most sports, practice makes perfect. And in the end, it's all about the team. We 
You can catch the Panther dance team at halftime of the men's and women's basketball games coming this fall. For Media Milwaukee, I'm Stevan Stojanovic. Another member of President Trump's cabinet was confirmed by the Senate on Tuesday. Betsy DeVos is now the Education Secretary after Vice President Mike Pence cast a deciding vote. We're here on the UWM campus to see people's thoughts about the news. Personally, I think it's a stupid decision, but I mean, they had to appoint someone. So. She does have some good ideas, but I don't know, I guess I don't agree with most of them. So. Um, I have probably made five, six, seven calls to my representatives telling them that I would not um, encourage them to um, vote for DeVos. Why is that? So I'm against, I'm against the nomination. Because I don't think she really has any experience at all. I think it's pretty clear she has a really hard time answering even very simple questions about education. I think she's very underqualified to be the education um, secretary. Just for someone who has no experience, just to go in there and, I don't know, I, I feel like during her interview, I, people are just quoting for her because she's a Republican, but I feel if you look at her history, other than um, donating to certain parties, she doesn't really have any qualifications. A lot of people didn't really know who Betsy DeVos was when we asked. And the next question is, which cabinet member is going to be the next to be confirmed? For Media Milwaukee, I'm Stevan Stojanovic. Hi, I'm Jenna Gatish. And I'm Stevan Stojanovic, and we're here in Prairie du Chien, Wisconsin, a city that has about 6,000 people living in it. It's also in Crawford County, which is one of the counties that flipped from being blue in 2012 to red in 2016. Now, we spoke to both sides of people supporting Clinton and Trump, but we're going to kick it off with a man who led us into his home. We also found Trump supporters. Some think the reason the county flipped might have been foreshadowed by the Scott Walker recall election of 2012, when Walker retained his seat following a battle with unions. Well, if you'd been here for the recall, you weren't shocked. You'd seen this before the night of the recall election. You saw that Republican, I guess the first waves come up on the beach and then the tidal wave hit November 8th. Take a look at this map from CNBC. Trump took Crawford County 50% to 45% over Hillary Clinton, and the county flipped by 25 points from 2012. I was kind of surprised that it changed too. I know a lot of my friends were thinking Hillary, you know, two months ago, and I don't know if it's just because of the scandals that came out or if we just are more worried, you know, as time got closer and, and people decided to go for Trump. This map from the Bureau of Labor Statistics shows the average weekly wages in Wisconsin by county. Crawford is here, and it falls in the lowest category of less than $649. He listened to the working class people, and I think he touched a nerve with them. And for so many years, the uh, average public person didn't think that our representatives in, in D.C. were listening to them at all, so I think he gave them a voice. Now we found that some people did not want to share their opinion about the election and actually found some business owners thought that it would be bad for their business. And jobs seems to be the major issue here in uh, Prairie du Chien and the area. And an even bigger question is, is this change just for a little while or can we expect Crawford County to go red again? For Media Milwaukee, I'm Jenna Gatish. And I'm Stan Stojanovic. It's the day after Inauguration Day in Madison, and the Library Mall on the University of Wisconsin campus is starting to fill with the color pink for the Women's March on Madison. The Madison March took place alongside marches in other cities around the country. Organizers called it a human rights march in the wake of President Trump's election. Take Chelsea Miller, a UWM student and the initial organizer of the march. She said it was her mother who helped her get involved politically. She got me into political activism really early when John Kerry was running for president. I was phone banking for him during the Act 10 protest. I was phone banking, canvassing. I even signed up to be a special registration deputy so I could get people signed up to vote. Um, just my parents. It's just kind of always been a big thing in our house. The event set off around noon and marched down State Street to the state capitol. The march featured people across all age groups, including millennials. We spoke to some millennials who had some issues on their minds at the march. I care about education and women's health care and um, just equality. <laughs> the one I care about the most is like climate change issues and the fact that like 
many of his cabinet members don't even believe like it's a hoax which is just crazy because without the earth like they won't even be alive and it's just like how do you I think everyone needs to care because it matters just like everyone being treated equally is like the big thing here for me that as well as um, equal pay is really important to me it's nearing 3 o'clock and the event is continuing behind me. Madison police estimate that there were 75 to 100,000 people at this march. In Madison for Media Milwaukee, I'm Stevan Stojanovic. The Milwaukee Admirals home opener is tomorrow night at the UWM Panther Arena. They're taking on the Iowa Wild at 6. Just a heads up if you're heading to the game. Parking is going to be challenging. Construction on the new Bucks Arena has taken away a lot of parking, and there will be a Bucks game going on at the BMO Harris Bradley Center at the same time. If you've been to a Milwaukee Bucks game, you've seen these guys, the rim rockers. They use trampolines, do flips, 360s, and pass combos before dunking the ball. Today they got to do those tricks with elementary school kids after the Milwaukee Bucks Foundation awarded $100,000 to schools that can Milwaukee. The grant will be distributed over the next two years. A sleepover gets violent and a Sheboygan mom is accused of stabbing her daughter's friend. Police say it happened after, after the mom caught boys inside the home. Kareen Zell is at St. Nicholas Hospital where the girl was treated for her injuries. The 12 year old victim was Corinne Zell, today's TMJ4. It has killed a record number of people in Milwaukee County, and now one mother is sharing her story. As the city of Milwaukee works to revive neighborhoods, the city offered up dollar properties to developers. But this is the crowd that showed up on Monday to learn about that program. John and Amanda, the whole picture is consolidation. The school system says with lower enrollment, this proposal change will help with financial stability. Fear. I really like the school. Now if this proposal goes through, teachers will also be placed at different schools throughout the district. The board will hear his proposal on February 6th. Live in West Dallas, Stevan Stojanovic, today's TMJ4. John. Governor Scott Walk. So the first question we have, um, is for the three of you. Um, so given the sheer kind of craziness of the election so far, what do you think is going through the mind of the average American voter? To be perfectly honest, I think it's information overload. I mean, first ever it happens to arise. Okay, pretty good. Um, so uh, this, this question is for, for you, Dan, um, because I know that you have a law degree, and I also know that that piece you did on Hillary Clinton from a while back. Um, is this email, this recent, Investigation likely to change James Comey's mind, do you think? Um, it's not about James Comey per se. Come seriously, investigate them. What does the evidence say? Right. Um, so we're running out of time here, but we have, I just have one more question. Who do you guys think is going to take this on Tuesday night? <laughs> it's kind of a loaded question, but just a uh, quick wrap up. That's <coughs> very difficult. I, th yeah. I still think despite... Uh, make your choice. Yeah. All right. Well, that's, that just about wraps things up here. Um, for Media Milwaukee, I'm Stavon Stojanovic. And I'm Katarina Vergara. We'll catch you next time. UWM students, faculty, and staff are back here in their offices and classrooms here in Bolton Hall after smoke from a small brush fire entered the building last week, and things appear to be back to normal.